night is not something to endure until dawn. It is an element like wind or fire. Darkness is its own kingdom. It moves to its own laws and many things dwell in it. Patricia McKillop. So it's dusk with the nice dusk, the cardinals are, there's a couple of, a couple of cardinals over there that are fighting. So, and the bats, the bats are out. Hi. Looking for food. Anyway, I want to do like kind of a VR to Ella. I'm going to leave her channel link below. Sometime last year. Uh, she made a video about the Triple Goddess and how she didn't really understand the Triple Goddess. She didn't know how to honor the archetypes and wanted some advice from those of us that use them in our craft, right? And so I, I, I've made plenty of videos. <laughs> I'm going to leave one specifically of the crone down below um, where I kind of talk through some of my thoughts on specifically well the crone but also the maiden in tandem with her so i'll leave that video below i might leave some other videos below that i've done on the triple goddess because i i work with goddess as an egregoric archetype overarching and i utilize the triple goddess as a way to mirror myself okay and i'm going to explain what i mean by this each of the three holds what I would like to call specific, very broadly, broadly, vaguely specific um, points in a life, in a life, not just a woman's life, in a life. Um, I don't sexualize the archetypes, not really. You could say that they, Robert Graves, who coined the term triple goddess, uses the terms mm, to kind of map out a woman's life firstly because he's a man and he thinks that a woman's life you know is based off of the menstruation cycle and childbirthing okay that's typical for a man especially when he when it was written okay uh however it doesn't have to be a menstruating thing those are just coined, these terms coined by him. And if you want some references for the Triple Goddess, there are a lot of books out there. But I would suggest you start with The White Goddess by Robert Graves and you also read The Heroine's Journey by Maureen Murdoch. Uh, both are 
they've been seminal works for me in my in my practice working with the divine feminine uh so i want to touch on all three because she specifically said that you know she had questions ella i'm talking about ella here sorry the table shaking had questions as to how we might honor the archetypes i want to say first before i go into the three you can add as many as you want as i as i said the goddess itself is overarching it's in it's abstract i mean i work with deity i guess you could say in an abstract way anyway but some people have even added like the maga for example in between the mother and the crone the maga being a sorceress someone that has gained the knowledge and then acts upon it okay as like a middle a middle person middle ground which is fine but you can add as many as you need as you see in your life okay but I will say that just because I would say that just because you say you decide never to have children or you can't have children that doesn't mean you will not and cannot have a relationship with the mother archetype it's an archetype you've had a mother what is that relationship right what is your relationship to other people's that have had children okay so let's just like that's just off to the side right there but you can see the archetypes whichever ones you embody and want to work with in your craft okay it doesn't have to be the triplicity it helps to for me to have the well i use like a i have i have used i've been known to use for years a kind of a fourfold system because after the crone i believe that there is death and as someone who works with an entity of the entity of death uh she kind of appears after the crone dies as death personified so anyway i kind of work with a fourfold system i call it uh maiden mother matriarch and mort as in death uh i've used that for a couple of years um but using the archetypes as abstractions have helped as well i'm going to tell you, you can use instead of using uh the humanity of woman the humanity of peoples the sexuality of peoples you can take all of that out, out of there and get down to their essence get down to their core uh well that's what i've done <laughs> and use nature you can use nature to help you with these archetypes because nature is a reflection of us uh you know as above so below so the maiden is the dancer she's innocence she is the maiden is curiosity the maiden is wonder and innocence but there's this curiosity behind her and there's this whirling nature to her that she's always dancing she's in the fields right now she's just feeling things she's in the fields you know she's just she's basking in the wonderment that's the maiden in nature terms she's spring she's the budding force the budding life force the thing that is still fragile is still looking uh for nourishment in a lot of ways looking for guidance in a lot of ways still clinging to winter okay clinging to the clinging back to the womb okay of the darkness of death she's still clinging to the to the apron strings as my mama would say um so she's still very much tethered all right the mother uh is the summer in nature terms but the mother is about gestation you don't mean just birthing i mean gaining we're gaining things and we're growing things we are gaining knowledge we are figuring out what our craft is and then and then figuring out the tools in which to make those crafts happen okay we're gaining ideas we're having ideas we're figuring out what we like we're figuring out what we're passionate about we're figuring out our fire which is indicative of summer and the, and the high point of the sun we're figuring out our passions we're gaining all of this and we're we're kind of like gluttonous with this okay and then in a gluttonous fashion we're gaining that pregnant belly okay 
We're, we're pregnant with it all. We're pregnant with ideas. We're pregnant with knowledge. We're pregnant with, um, with that, still with that curiosity of the maiden too, but we're using what we, what we had with the maidenhood. We're using that to drive us towards goals. Now we're, we're driven now. So it's about ambition. Okay. The mother is about ambition. Largely, I think that the seeker mindset happens here. Now, while we are curious in the maiden, we don't really, we're not curious for one or some, we're not specifically curious about something like actually specific, vivid. We turn this curiosity in, in the mother stage, okay, with the mother archetype, we turn this curiosity into something that we can manifest that we can birth. I'll add the MAGA here just for, again, for shits. The MAGA being the sorceress, this is honing those skills. So we've gained the knowledge, we're, we're gaining it. We don't really trust ourselves yet because again, in the mother stage, I feel like this is a very liminal time. You know, we're no, you know, we're not, we're not naive about the world anymore. We've, we've gained some kind of knowledge of the world. We know a little bit about heartbreak now. That's a big thing. I've made a video about this, about heartbreak and the, and the goddess and the, and the mother. Okay. Um, I'll leave that below. Heartbreak is mother. Heartbreak. Knowing the mysteries of humanity, but also wanting to know the humanity of us, what we're going to endure, what we're not going to put up with, what we are going to put up with, boundaries. And then also, we're, we're it's like we've... We're squinting, the third eye is squinting in the motherhood, mother archetype with the mother archetype, is squinting as to the mysteries of a total sense. Squinting at those mysteries, right? The MAGA, uh, or the, uh, well, that was the mother and the MAGA together. And then when the, we get to the MAGA stage, we're honing those skills. She knows what she wants now. And it's about instead of getting everything you need and, and you need and uh you know gathering up a nest if you will gathering up what you need for a nest to set yourself up the maga knows how to do all that and then sets out a plan plan maker all right and then the crone who is my favorite okay she teaches me a whole bunch i've had a whole bunch of visions with her in my life um I've been blessed to have a, I would say, crone mentor in my life uh, for the, well, for the large part of my life. The crone is personified wisdom. Okay. That's it. It's embodied. And the crone is emboldened by all that she's seen. There was a great line. I'm sure I'm paraphrasing because I don't know what the hell it is now. In Women Who Run With The Wolves, the chapter three uh, I'm currently doing a read along with that, uh, but in the Vasilisa and Baba Yaga, um, there was a line in there that said, the old woman, the old hag, the Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga has seen so much and is proud of that, but then also discouraged like not not discouraged that's not the right word she is proud of all that she's done and all that she's seen but then there's another aspect of her that doesn't like that that doesn't like that she's seen so much so it's wisdom right and we know wisdom and knowledge are different things but we're wisdom she's not people pleasing anymore because she knows herself better she knows the world she knows she has another she has a deeper relationship with human nature so she's good advice now I do want to plug here that something that Ella said in her video about who wants to be the crone you know like I'm raising my hand I want to be the crone I want to be this wise old crone that people want to go to for advice um, but she mentioned the hag being like ugly and terrifying in a lot of the tales and myths. She's terrifying one, 
because she's symbolizing how close she is to death and how that is still such a fearsome and taboo subject is of death and how much we she she's like the personification of that which we don't know when we wither and die okay but people forget that she's terrifying and ugly and hag like in a lot of these stories and myths because of how society has taught us about beauty and youth and how no one wants to be ugly and old when it's a blessing to get that far in life okay it's a blessing sure you've seen a lot you've done a lot you've had a hard row of it you know but when you make it to crone years you're like shit i did it i did this i lived this life you know that's what it is she's terrifying it's ugly because she's in the opposite end of the spectrum. It's a spectrum, okay? I believe the crone to hold all the archetypes. She holds all of them. All of them hold each other in them, okay? Sometimes a maiden will get an intuitive hit. That's that's ooh, that's the the mother, right? Sometimes. Uh, she'll say no in the face of adversity and that's the crone right like some sometimes the mother will will do something that's maiden like and wonder and play right get in the floor and play that's that's the, that's back to the maiden they all interlock okay um and the crone is winter the crone is the bite of winter but she's ugly because she's the op she's the seemingly opposite of youth and beauty and how society and our especially over here in the west in this culture we've been taught tell us we're ugly and then sell us makeup tell us we're, we're ugly without telling us we're ugly is by having only people that look the same in your magazines, people that look the same in your makeup commercials and in your beauty commercials and in your clothes catalogs and in your clothes advertisements, um, peoples that look the same. There's no differentiation, you know? I do feel a little bit like we're getting a little bit better with this, but not really. Uh, people tend to look the same. And that's telling us we're ugly without saying it out loud. And then that makes us feel inferior, right? But if we can go through the stages and work with the archetypes and hone the archetypes within our psyches and form relationships with them all, it will embolden us to see the beauty that lives within us, no matter what stage of life we're in. Um, ask them questions. I ask my, my archetypes questions. What does the maiden need to tell me? Again, I, I coined the, the maiden close with death as the, as the maiden, uh, the uh, death and the maiden motif, right? She dances with death because she just came out of the womb, okay? So she kind of rode the line for a little bit. And then the crone is so close to death as well, but it's like they're the flip side of the coin to death. Like here's death in the middle. And then the crones on one side, the maidens on the other. So you ask them questions. Go to the realms. Where are their domains in your psyche, right? What do they look like? If you were to go and meet the hag in the winter, in the bitter cold, what, is she, what advice is she giving? What wisdom is she sharing with you? Uh, I did have a vision once um, of a wildflower garden with a maiden in it. And she was completely nude, completely perfect, but all she would say or I could hear was laughter it was laughter that's it is laughter uh, and then the mother what ideas have you had what are you germinating in your life what have you germinated what have you what idea have you set out and then made a plan and executed that plan that's something that you've birthed. I'm currently working on a, uh, my coloring book, right? For 
an upcoming deck slash coloring book and I finished the manuscript and I said, I kept going through the images and I was like, oh my God, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. And then I realized that they're all my babies. All 110 images of those things are my babies. I birthed them. They came out of my body. They came out of my hand. You know, those are my babies. Those are my ideas put to rest. You know, and then when I send it out in the world, it's kind of this scary transitional time too, that right before you put your stuff out there, your idea out there, you finalize it, right? There's this nervousness. That right there is like the empty nest syndrome where you send your kids off to college and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. This is very emotional for me. I can't sever the ties. You know, same thing. You, you have the same emotions, okay? Because you took care of something. You cultivated something. What is it? Ask each one of the archetypes, and I'll even go back to the triplicity for the sake of Ella's video. Ask the maiden what she creates, what she destroys, what she loves, and what is she willing to go to war for? Those are my questions that I would ask, that I do ask. The mother, the same thing. What would the mother create? What would the, what would the mother destroy? What does the mother love? And what is, the, what is the mother willing to go to war for? Ask all the archetypes in the Divine Feminine that you work with these questions. It's creation, destruction, love, and war. That's it. That's it. Ask them. Now that it's officially night, I'm going to pop off of here. <laughs> I hope, Ella, I hope that... Uh, I don't know. I hope that sharing these thoughts has helped a little bit. Uh, of course, come at me in the comments and let me know whether you uh, watched it. Okay. It's a full moon tonight. 16 mile an hour winds, which, you know, <laughs> it could be worse. Uh -huh. Or in my case, it could be better, but it's noticeable, you know? She's here. Her energy is here. And it's fascinating to me because as a wind witch, as a wind, using wind magic, that I can hear it before it comes to me, before she gets here. I have some trees that perimeter the property and I can hear it blowing through them like now. Before the gust gets to me. I don't know if y'all can hear that. Hopefully y'all can. And it's, it's cool because when using wind, you pick a night like, like now, right? And you think to yourself, okay, when I hear the gust, uh, well, first of all, I use kind of, I use kind of the direction of the wind is going, right? Especially on full moon nights, I feel the goddess, I feel her energy. I kind of... Oh, excuse me. I draw down the moon, so to speak, I guess, in my own way. <laughs> I draw down the moon, draw down the goddess in, in internal, internalize the moon, internalize the energy of the goddess. And then when I, once I've done that, I listen for the next time the wind blows to the trees, right? And then I inhale really deep, really deep. Like, 
I mean, five, seven count, you know, of an inhale. And then when the gust hits me, I know that my message was inhaled and I need to let it, I need to let it out, right? So the wind can drive it away, drive it to its destination. And so I, I pull down the moon's energy. I, then I think about my intention. I think about what, where my intention's going to go. And I just map a spell around wind gusts and the goddess. I love to do this at night. It's always windier at night <laughs> for me. I love to do this at night. I feel closer to it somehow. I feel because I can't see the trees moving because it's such darkness, so much darkness. I have to go on feeling alone. I have to go on sensation alone. That's what the goddess is. It's sensations. It's feelings, it's emotions. And uh, when I invoke her, I pull down that moon and I inhale that energy. I keep it. See, when an inhale, you kind of keep it in the body, right? You really emphasize, I'm holding it here. I'm holding the energy. And then upon the exhale, I'm letting out the invocation but then I'm letting them, the wind and the goddess, the spirit of the goddess, take it to where it needs to go. That's what I do. And I just, I love to sit on my back deck and do this because it's, my deck's kind of high up from the ground. So the gusts are really more powerful than if I were standing on the ground. I love that sound. I love that sound. It's like a, I'm coming for you. It's a whisper. It's a, literally a whisper on the wind. The gusts that I hear in the trees and I hear them swaying and creaking and cracking and she's whispering, I got you. I'm coming for you. And I hold that in my heart. And then I exhale. I'll let her go back to her business. She visited me and I'll let her go back to her business. I didn't let her. She's going to do what she wants to do. <laughs> but I let her go. I don't want to hold her here, you know? She can't be tied to me. She's got many other people to go see, to go fight for, to go love, to go read petitions, ignite passion filled spells especially on magical nights like full moons. I think full moons are powerful because even non-practitioners know the power. They can feel it. It's like she's most awake, you know? She's most awake these nights. She's most influential on these nights. And Everyone feels it. And if I can tap into just a tiny bit of that, that's enough. That's enough. My magic is powerful, but she comes and rescues me and teaches me things and gives me lessons and gives me visions. And I let the wind, I kind of ride the wind like an old Arabic tale. I ride the wind. See, she agrees with me. <laughs> she acknowledges that I have respected her by talking about her in this way. I think that's what she just did. <laughs> she talks to me. It's, it's almost like this weird sensory language that she talks to me with. And I'll be doing something. I'll be saying something or chanting something or thinking something in my head and it's like something's playing out maybe it's something of the day maybe I've maybe I'm trying to let the day go and I kind of tr I'm trying to blank out my mind with the blank of the darkness with the dark dark darkness I look out into the void of the darkness and I have the moon in my periphery and I just breathe 
I know she's there, right? And then sometimes when I feel a heightened of a, a, a heightened emotion, or I get to a climax of some kind in my brain, like if I'm in like trying to do a spell or a ritual, if I if I hit the climax, that's when that big gust of wind comes, and it's just like a hug but also a yes and also a a conversation it's a conversation she's talking to me now yes I'm talking about you I'm actually getting ready to do a ritual and I most of the time, if I'm going to be doing it outside of any kind, like in the darkness, in the night, <laughs> I try to come out and um, instead of like coming out and doing the ritual and then going back inside, I kind of want to come out and ingrain myself with the night. Tell it I'm here. I'm here. Linen is here. Okay. She goes, she's going to do some magic. Yeah. Okay. And we'll, we'll have the magic conversation eventually. But I want all the creatures to know I'm here, all the spirits to know that I'm out here. And right now, I'm just listening. I'm just having a conversation with them. I'm listening. There may be a lesson on the wind. There may be a vision on the wind. There may be a dream that comes later. I'm opening myself up. I'm opening myself up to the night and to the energies opening my heart and they know if you can't tell <laughs> they know if my wind if my my wind chimes are any indication too <laughs> gosh in this wind not that I need them things hanging but you hear that it hasn't gotten me yet It rushes upon me like a wave, literally like an ocean wave. It goes, it sings its song, and then it rushes to me in, a, in an act of flow, quite literally, in, in energy flow. It's sensory feeling, it's sensory knowing. And it dares to want to have a conversation with me it wants to know me. It wants to know me on levels that I want to know it. And then we all acknowledge that there are inevitable, inevitable mysteries within me and within the spirits and the deities and the, the darkness as an entity that we're not going to be able to touch. Does the darkness know my name? Do you know my name? So lovely. Then the moon comes out from behind the shadow and you just know, you just, you just know, you just You just be. The light is really weird because the, the thing is... There it is. A little glimpse of the beauty. That is she. <laughs> this is a little part. Daring the midnight fog of the witching hour. Amid this dreamlike time take the ruby essence falling from my finger steal what was once mine hear my spell glide through nebulous skies like a skylark upon a breeze unlatch your lock of fortification so my inquisitive skull may be at ease unveil your inscriptions to my shrewd eyes the spears of a sorceress Within the grimoire, show me the wisdom of witches I yearn to possess. <laughs>